Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to finally be giving you all a proper introduction to the new Corvette on my channel. And of course, that is my 1996 Grand Sport. Now the C4 Corvette Grand Sport was exclusive to the 1996 model year and was intended to mark the end of the production run of the C4 generation and is an homage to the original Grand Sport made back in 1963. The defining characteristics of the C4 Grand Sports was that they were all produced in Admiral Blue metallic paint with the distinctive large single racing stripe running the full length over the top of the vehicle, as well as two small red hash marks on the driver's side front fender. Limited to a production run of only 1,000 units, 810 were coupes and 190 were convertibles, and they all featured a unique VIN number set that easily allows for determination of which production number each unit is, and of course mine is number 138. Under the hood, all Grand Sports were powered by the 5.7 liter 350 cubic inch LT4 engine that was married to the mandatory 6-speed manual transmission. The LT4 is basically a high-performance version of the LT1, featuring a more aggressive cam, rockers, fuel injectors, crankshaft, and a higher flow intake manifold in its distinctive red paint with Grand Sport badge on the throttle body. It is rated at 330 horsepower with 340 pound-feet of torque and a higher compression ratio of 10.8 to 1. Along with the common color scheme and drivetrain, all Grand Sports featured black versions of the ZR1 five-spoke wheels with staggered front and back wheel and tire combinations. Coupes such as this being produced with 17 by 9.5 front wheels wrapped in 275 40 ZR17s, with much wider 17 by 11 wheels wrapped in massive 315 35 ZR17 tires in the rear, giving it a much more aggressive stance than a typical C4. On the inside we have the black on black interior with leather seats embroidered with the red Grand Sport graphic. The door sills also feature special chrome guards with the Grand Sport badging as well. Other than those unique touches, it has the typical interior you would find in any other late generation C4. The dash layout is driver centric with a mix of analog and digital display readouts of the most important information needed in sports cars. It has a fully optioned electronic climate control system that covers all aspects of heating and cooling in the cabin. It also features what was at the time a state-of-the-art Delco Bose stereo system accommodating both cassette tape as well as compact disc. Outside of the six-speed shifter, the center console area features the cup holders as well as controls for both the driver and passenger power seats as well as the small locking storage area. At the end of the day, regardless of whether someone loves Corvettes or not, there is no getting around that the 1996 Grand Sport has one defining feature that no one can argue, and that it is truly one unique and cool looking car that anyone that admires and respects the rich history of American muscle can truly appreciate. 
So for those of you that follow me on Instagram and of course are subscribed to this channel, it comes as no surprise that I've been talking about getting a different Corvette for a very long time. Now, I originally had plans to go with the C5 or maybe even a C6, but when the opportunity came along to find a really nice C4 Corvette and stay with the C4 generation, it seemed like a deal that was too good to pass up. So what I would like to do real quick is just to go over the process of why I stuck with the C4 instead of getting the C5 or the C6 and of course uh, explain the process of first how I found the car, what it took to get it, and of course what it took to get it back here to Wisconsin. So as with any good car hunt, you start online. And my choice of a site was cars.com. Of course, this isn't an endorsement or anything like that, but it tends to be the place that I go to search for cars when I'm in the market. So of course, I wanted to find Corvettes. And I was giving myself a price range of around $30,000, but of course I was not looking really to spend that much. But ultimately my decision was that I wanted to find something that would keep me in a payment that would be somewhere in the neighborhood of around $300. And of course the, the term could be as long as, it, it, as, as long as it could be because I frankly didn't really care about that. I was just more or less worried about the, the monthly payment because I don't intend to have this car for the rest of my life and I just want to enjoy it while I have it and be able to afford it. And the place I decided to start was the C5. And I was ideally looking for something around a 2002 to 2004, preferably a 2003 Z06. Now as much as I really did have my heart set on going with the C5, when I looked at the financing options of what was available for that generation of vehicle, most of them were very high interest rates and very short term loans, due to the fact that they were not old enough to be a classic car, but they didn't really fall into the newer used car category. So I decided to take a look at some of the C6s because I could actually finance a 2013 at a much better rate and a lower payment than most of the C5s. Now as much as I loved the C5 Z06, the C6 Z06 was absolutely beautiful. But for those of you that are aware, they have that uh, the head lifter problem, and that was something I just was not willing to sign on for. And a big shout out to the family car guy up in Minnesota who had to send his car in because he was dealing with that very issue. And that brought my attention to it, and thus is why I decided that I was going to completely stay away from that car. Now since the Z06 was off the table and I didn't really like the base model C6 that much, the Grand Sport trim package was actually kind of the best of both worlds. Of course you didn't have all the issues of the Z06, but you had the look. And the Grand Sport of the C6 of course is a very, very beautiful looking car with the, the wide body, the trim. Just if I were going to get a C6 it would definitely would be a Grand Sport. So with Cars.com coming up a little bit short, I headed over to Craigslist, and lo and behold, a certain Grand Sport caught my eye. But this was not a C6, this was actually a C4 that was for sale down in Illinois. So I took a look at it, and I was like, wow, this car looks really, really nice. Now this particular Grand Sport had close to 100,000 miles on it was less than $20,000 and I actually did call and speak to the owner and more or less just this did not specifically seem like this was the one to get. But this reinvigorated my thought process on sticking with the C4 because getting a 96 Grand Sport versus a 2013 Grand Sport gave me all of the same financing options but also the added bonus of collector car insurance which is way cheaper than getting full coverage on a financed C6. Now after doing a little bit of research on the 96 Grand Sport and finding out of course how rare it was, I did broaden my search horizon to see what I could find and I was only able to find a handful of them available for sale and most of them were very low miles and very expensive. Now the closest option I could find was a 30,000 mile one that was $30,000 and I just was not willing to spend that much money of course but lo and behold I eventually came across this Grand Sport it was a little over 500 miles away from me and was for sale at a dealership and that was Hulette Chevy down in Camdenton Missouri 
It was right around 50,000 miles and was for sale for $23,000. And the miles were perfect for what I wanted. It wasn't too low that I would be afraid to drive it, and it wasn't too high that I would fear the resale would be much harder to do. And priced at $23,000 fell right in my price range that I was affordable and would give me a monthly payment in the low $300 a month. The fact that the car was for sale at a Chevy dealership also meant that I felt more confident in purchasing the vehicle with the dealership standing behind it, and also that being able to finance it it would be a lot easier to work through the dealership to get the loan, get the sale, and bring it home. It just seemed like this was the perfect one to find for what I was looking for. So after getting in touch with the dealership and speaking to Shane, who was very helpful in making this process happen, I gave all the questions, found all the answers to all the important things that I wanted to know about the car. I found out that the, uh, the owner was actually trading in the vehicle towards a new uh, C8 Corvette and was using this car as a down payment to make that happen. So the dealership was actually helping that person sell the vehicle and thus I knew that it was coming from a true Corvette, like avid Corvette guy. I mean, he had owned this car for over 10 years. He was in the Grand Sport Registry, among a bunch of other things, and was going to be using this towards a brand new Corvette when they come out next year. And that was just, it just felt like the stars were aligning at this point. So after talking with Shane, I asked him to please, you know, if they could give a full inspection of the car, let me know if it really needed anything major. And he sent me a video and actually showed me how amazingly pristine and clean this car was underneath. And with 50,000 miles on it, you don't expect it to be perfect, but this car really looked like it was almost brand new underneath. Now after seeing that video of how clean it was underneath, it wasn't leaking anything, there was no rust, it looked like there was no damage, that to me really was what put me over the edge and said, okay, this is the car I want to get, now I need to make it happen. And how am I going to go, and go about and do that? because um, I need to get that car from Missouri back to Wisconsin. And we discussed shipping options and looked into time frames and stuff like that. And ultimately, I decided that my best course of action was that I was gonna put myself on a plane, I was gonna fly down there, pick up the car myself, and drive it home. So, long story short, a couple days later, I was up bright and early in the morning heading to Mitchell International Airport out of Milwaukee so that I could catch my flight down to Missouri. There weren't really any really good direct flights that were in my price range, let's say, and unfortunately I had to make a quick stop down in Chicago. Now when I got to Chicago, I had about a one hour layover, but unfortunately, I actually had about a half hour walk from one side of the airport at one terminal all the way to the other side of the terminal so that I could catch my connection flight that was actually going to take me down to Kansas City. Now O'Hare Airport is a huge place with that giant walkway all the way underneath uh, the, the runway I believe, a huge concourse, multiple terminals and unfortunately yeah it did take about a half hour <laughs> just to get over to my actual flight to take me to Kansas City. Gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to Kansas City, Missouri, home of the Chiefs, the Royals, and a whole bunch of barbecue. So when I got into Kansas City, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning at this point in time, and the one thing that was very noticeable about the Kansas City airport was it looked like a ghost town compared to how things were in Chicago at O'Hare Airport. It was just like night and day compared to what you know, an actual really busy hub airport was like. All right guys, I'm outside of Kansas City Airport and the car is coming in. 
and I am going to be picking it up right now. So, without further ado, just walking up to it right now, and here it is. <laughs> Very, very nice, my friend. Oh, that looks beautiful coming up. So, I'm going with the easy camera work. Dan? Shane Morgan, pleasure to meet you finally. <laughs> nice to meet you. All right, I'm here with Shane Morgan from uh, Hewlett Chevrolet Buick GMC. <laughs> yep, and he was so kind to meet me on a Sunday and uh, bring my new C4 Corvette Grand Sport out to uh, pick me up at the airport and we are going to go do the finalized paperwork and all that stuff and I will get back to you guys in a little bit. So we got the original Grand Sport car cover and the bag and everything. And whatever that yeah. is. <laughs> we will find out later. So, and some of the other goodies we got the original VHS cassette, extra keys, um, something on something at some point. Yeah, packing <laughs> material of some sort, and more wheel logs. Oh, yeah. Probably long gone since. Uh, the original uh, build sheet from the factory. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, uh, build data from that uh, model year of the thousand Grand Sports um, that were built. This is one of 190 that were six speed with black interior and the Z51 suspension. Very nice. Uh, some original sales literature that was available at the time. With the original window sticker. It's not even a reprint, though, actually. Yeah, it was nice. new. The original cool. sales brochure yeah. for the Corvettes in 96, so it's kind of always neat to have the you know, yeah. feature cover car. Yeah, I know the, the red interior was the mm -hmm. was the really sought after ones. So. And then additional just sales literature, and then this was just a, a vehicle uh, information sheet yeah. for it. And then is that a record? Portfolio. Well, yeah, that <laughs> 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 Right, nice. It'd be a sweet A-track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, that thing is nice. All right, guys. I'm I'm doing it. It's my first drive in the C4 Grand Sport. Um, this is a beautiful car. It's not perfect, but it's a beautiful car. Uh, looks amazing drives great. <laughs> it's got a uh, six-speed manual transmission, of course, because they all did. AC works, windows work. I'm happy. This is, this is a very, very nice car. I'm glad I found this thing. So I'm going to get back to driving here, and then uh, I'm going to try and find a park or something like that so we can pull off and uh, do, a, do a really good official introduction. So at this point I drove about an hour north of Kansas City to do that very video and found a really nice rest stop on the state line between Iowa and Missouri, pulled off and did my live reveal video. And if you have not yet seen that video, of course it is available on my channel here. And what I did was I just kind of gave a real quick introduction to the car, answered a few viewer questions, and just gave a general rundown of, you know, well, how I got the car, why I got the car, etc., etc. But it was a little more uh, raw, off-the-cuff version of what this video is actually meant to be. After finishing up the video, I headed back out on the road and had a nearly 500 mile trip left to go and most of it across Iowa with not much of anything to look at. That is up until I came across a stretch of windmills on a uh, giant wind farm area and decided to pull into a rest stop and lo and behold I ran into an entire convoy of trucks and trailers that were pulling these massive fan blades that you don't really realize how big they are until you see them on the ground like that, but they were massive fan blades for that windmill farm. Yeah. 
So other than that, the remainder of the ride home was more or less completely uneventful, other than the couple opportunities afforded me to take a few nice pictures along the way. Now I didn't actually get home until well after sunset, meaning that this was not a very efficient road tour, but it wasn't meant to be. This was an experience, and it's one that I will never forget. Alright guys, so there you have it. That is the video about how I got my 1996 C4 Grand Sport. Now I want to thank you all for your patience and me getting this video out. I've spent, uh, spent countless hours on editing this thing and putting the whole thing together and I wanted this one to be good and you know properly produced as I feel it's you know it's a very important video for me um, you know it's a big change to the channel and I just wanted you guys to have the best experience with this video uh, that I could possibly put out there so to this point I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, I do want to take a moment to answer a few of your questions I did post on Instagram um, you know if anybody had any questions about the car going forward so I'm going to take a you know a couple minutes here and just answer a few of those questions here real quick Alright, so the first question I got is from Dap, uh, Dat Gummify. How is the handling compared to your yellow one? Worlds apart. I mean, this uh, this one here is uh, it's so planted. Um, when I went to the racetrack up at the Dells, it just completely stuck to the track where the yellow one kind of felt a little bit more like a boat, kind of rocking back and forth. So this one is um, you know worlds apart. I don't know if it's the Z51 suspension or it's just a better shaped car, but overall, world, worlds of difference. Um, Yes, I test drove a C5 and a C6, and um, they were both awesome cars, and I was very looking forward to getting one of them or the other one, Mosquito. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm very happy with uh, my choice with going the Grand Sport so far. Um, any future upgrades or mods? Um, as of right now, I am planning to not really do any modifications to the car. If I do anything, they will be nothing but cosmetic or bolt-ons so that I can keep the car as stock as possible. If this is a collectible vehicle. Again, with only a thousand of them ever being made, I don't want to mess with the car in any significant way. It's great how it is so far, other than a few little things that need to get fixed. Um, exhaust needs to get louder. I do want to put those little uh, mirror wind blockers on here like I did on my yellow one. I think that would make a uh, a big difference in just the drivability of the car when you're driving at high speed such as on the freeway. Um, I was really happy with them in the, the, the yellow C4 so I'm going to definitely do that again. Um, was going to tint the windows but after seeing all the stickers on the windows and everything there's a lot of history in this car and frankly I don't really want to mess with that so I'm probably just going to leave it as is. Um, there's a lot of questions there but quirk, quirks and features paint protection wash process. Um, I'll be doing some videos on some of that stuff later. So, uh, Another question from Instagram by Corvette Cortez 96 Will you be doing a muffler delete like you did on your 95 or a whole new cat back exhaust in the future? Um, well, to answer that, that part of the question, um, basically it boils down to I don't know if I'm going to do the, the muffler delete or not because unfortunately I think that would require cutting the stock exhaust off. I took a look underneath, it doesn't bolt off or anything like that. And I just, uh, again, like I said before, I don't think I want to mess with the car. Um, I want to keep it as stock as possible. So if I do, um, I, I don't know if that's really going to affect the car or not because I think it's too quiet and I think people, you know, would really like it sounding better. So I, I haven't fully decided. I mean, getting the muffler deletes are only like a hundred some bucks, whereas the whole cat back exhaust is actually. I don't know anywhere between I found one of those like six hundred dollars and a couple of them up to like two grand So I haven't fully decided on that, but I'm definitely going to be doing something with the exhaust one way or the other All right Callaway C4 uh, Great. What, what is your GS number? Well, of course that is number 138 Paul Reagan Look at the GS paint black and uh, look at the GS paint and black wheels and someone tell me you wouldn't buy this car. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I know this uh, on the spectrum of C4 Corvettes is, you know, it, it's a pretty expensive car. Uh, uh, they seem to be priced even higher than the, the ZR1s and uh, ultimately, yeah, I, I mean, like, it, if you could buy a C4, this is probably the one to get, but at the same point in time, you got to be willing to pay that price range. And I know for a 23-year-old car, that's a little bit too much uh, for some people. But so that was just the Instagram questions that I had. But uh, just to address some other common questions I've had so far is, do I still have my yellow Corvette? As of 
the time of the posting of this video, I do. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that yet because um, I do have a little bit of an emotional attachment to that car. That is what I started my channel with, more or less. Got me my first attention. Um, I haven't really decided. I, I don't really need to sell it for money or anything like that right now. Um, haven't really fully decided what I'm going to do. Ideally, my long-term plan would be I wouldn't mind um, saving it to build like a, a drag strip car down the line but you know that's I don't know I haven't really fully decided but I do still have, have the uh, the LLC for at this point and I know I've seen some questions about what are my plans for the car um, going forward now of course you know I'm probably gonna keep it stock like I said not really gonna do much in the way of modifications but things that I do want to do especially for YouTube is I do want to take it in and get a dyno test because I know that they've said that the LT4 is pretty much comparable to the the LS1 um, that was kind of underrated in horsepower and stuff. I, I know that the wheel is going to be different than the crank, but uh, I do want to I, I do want to take it in and get a dyno test. I do want to go drag racing since I never got an opportunity to do that yet. Uh, I do want to go to like Road America or some racing courses like the Milwaukee Mile and actually get on the track. Maybe get into some SCCA stuff. I don't want to do anything too hard. It is an older car and things like that, but I do just want to get a taste for seeing how some of that stuff is. And you know, it looks like a lot of people are having fun on YouTube doing things like that. Um, i got a couple car shows uh, going forward that I'm hoping to attend if the weather <laughs> can, can stay nice here in Wisconsin for any length of time. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming here, but uh, I'm not going to drag this out any much, you know, too much longer here. I just want to again say thank you to everybody. I'm uh, slowly uh, moving in on that, uh, that 1,500 uh, subscriber mark. Um, also, real quick, I had the car for almost a month now, and uh, I've put over a thousand miles on it. I'm at just crossed 51,000 miles. I have enjoyed every minute of it. Um, well, uh, other than <laughs> the latter half of the drive back from Missouri to get it. But um, somebody has asked how my driver's experience is, and you know, I only take it out on on nice days on the weekends, just kind of go and do some stuff. It's not a daily, daily driver or anything like that. Um, but uh, so far, I have to say, I am very, very happy with with <laughs> with this car. <laughs> so, but anyways. Um, um, that'll do it for this one, and I uh, thank you all for watching. As always, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Um, throw your comments down below, and I'll do my best to answer most of them. I will try and get a few more videos out here. Uh, next one I'm kind of planning is what are some of the first things that I did with the Grand Sport when I got back. Also, my experience at Corvette Adventures 2019. Um, probably going to do uh, another, uh, you know, 10 things I like, 10 things I dislike. Um, there are a few things I've learned about the car since I did my last uh, C4 Secrets video, so I might do a more Secrets video. But that'll do it for this one. So as always, thanks for watching. Check me out on Instagram at 13Scorpio. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.